is all there, but we, we, we still wait to see it time and time again. Uh, but what about this team, Ferrari and, and Fernando Alonso, who spent a lot of today aero mapping. Felipe Massa did get a race simulation in yesterday. And uh, Fernando Alonso taking over duty today currently with the ninth fastest time but that's not indicative of the Ferrari pace they just haven't been chasing the times too much as we found out when we caught up and, and Ted Kravitz spoke to Fernando Alonso just after lunch Hola Fernando um, it's a bit more like uh, Banbury than Barcelona with the weather here um, what have you been doing this morning and what have you got planned for this afternoon? I've been in the car and I will be in the car in, this, in the afternoon again. <laughs> you got it doing a race distance to, uh, this afternoon? Uh, we will try. We will try to do a race distance, but uh, there are some uh, uh, parts that we need to, to keep going with the, with the testing due to the weather conditions this morning and yesterday. We, it's difficult to test uh, properly, so we will try to do both things. Try to test some parts and uh, do as many miles as possible. So do you think you'll only be able to try out the car and maybe Australia spec? Uh, in the last two days of the test? Oh, no, I think we'll be in Australia because the parts for Australia are not coming for this test, some of them, so we will mount on Friday there and uh, hopefully they work. And just finally, do, do you feel you're at the moment just behind the leaders a bit? I uh, think uh, we are more or less uh, where we expect to be, which is a little bit behind the top teams because uh, we finished Brazil 7 or 8 tenths behind uh, McLaren and Red Bull and uh, in two months uh, no one recovers seven tenths like this so uh, hopefully we arrive a little bit closer than that in uh, Melbourne. Thanks Fernando. Since lunch Fernando Alonso has only put in two timed laps and just doing a little practice start at the end of the uh, pit lane we'll see how many he puts in here. Ever the realist Fernando Alonso, ever the, uh, the motivator really at the team. He knows his ability but he needs to raise this Ferrari outfit for this year. I mean, bearing in mind he hasn't won a title now in you know, seven years, he, he's itching to be successful and he's itching for, for Ferrari to be successful with him. Etched in my mind is in the last race in Brazil when Petr de Pataito, remember Alonso, just stood and watched, yeah. just absorbed the pain of losing that world championship. I don't think he'll, if the car's not on the pace again this year, I think he will be stamping his feet very much and uh, I think there'll be a lot of big changes because there's no way Alonso will cope with losing another world championship as he should have won. Yeah, three points uh, the difference uh, and a very intense stare and focus for Manus who said last title won 2006 and, I, and I'm stunned that I'm saying that because you know you, you expected after those back-to-back -back world championships that more would swiftly follow especially when he went to, to McLaren but he missed the first test, arrives refreshed and, and, and focused, I think, and, 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 and a realist as well. Which is why I think he is such a positive team leader at Ferrari. He doesn't outwardly criticise, he, he just accepts the situation and says, no, we need to work on this and we, and we need to be doing better. But it's a, it's a fair assumption that he does need support within the team and from within his co-driver as well. If, if Ferrari have this hierarchy, the number one, the number two, he needs Felipe to step up to the plate for him, really. Yeah, he needs Massa to take points off his rivals and the team need Massa to step up to the plate when Alonso has an issue, either an incident on track or a reliability issue or what have you. Um, Massa needs to be right in there, as it tended to be towards the end of last season, it must be said. Oh, we shouldn't forget that I think Felipe had a very strong end uh, to, to 2012. But it, 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 it must be hard for any driver to accept that he is the number two and to, to be there playing the supporting role, even if you know, he's signed an extension, he's, he's on for another year and, 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 and he's gone into that new contract knowing the situation. I think it, yeah, if, if you're in, a, in the end, it wrecked Ruben Barrichello, didn't it? Having to, he really suffered psychologically Absolutely. from that. I think Mass is managing it reasonably well. Mark Webber refuses to let it happen. Do you remember how hard Mark Webber was fighting <laughs> Vettel in the final Grand Prix when Vettel was up for the championship? <laughs> and uh, Mark, uh, despite uh, as uh, the Ferrari goes in way too deep into turn one, we saw the lock-up and then couldn't quite make the apex. So uh, Alonso there a little bit uh, too brave on the brakes. But yeah, I think Mark Webber's absolute run, I've had this conversation with him actually, of, of you can't, psychologically, you cannot be uh, openly painted as the number two, even if that's where you end up 
on performance levels and uh, and Massa psychologically he's got to cope with that. I guess what's the alternative? I mean, Fisichella, one of the last uh, Ferrari drivers, is GT racing, and you know so is Senna now, and so is uh, probably Kamui Kobayashi, for example. Nothing wrong with GT racing, but that could be the alternative. You might be better off. Um, playing second fiddle to Alonso in a works Ferrari. Ted, I'll, we'll bring you in this for, on this discussion from down in the pit. I hope you can hear us. Hello, David. Yes, of course I can hear you. Um, uh, I, just two things from that uh, interview. First of all, no surprise that uh, Fernando Alonso says in his motivational way and downplaying expectations that, you know, we are behind the top teams. Mm. He's been singing the same, from the same hymn sheet on that one uh, pretty much all winter. Who those top teams are, we've been discussing throughout this. Uh, haven't we? So um, that's that's no surprise to hear him say that. What I was surprised to hear him say was that they wouldn't be, they wouldn't have the uh, the Melbourne the first race uh, upgrade package ready for the final two days of this test, which is unlike all their other championship challenging teams, unlike McLaren, unlike Red Bull, unlike Mercedes, we believe. So uh, that is new to come out from Fernando Alonso. Um, to be fair to him and to be fair to Ferrari. They had never said, they'd only alluded to the fact that they would be bringing the new parts uh, to the last two days of this test. Indeed, Felipe alluded to that when we spoke to him yesterday, didn't he? They didn't promise that they would, but uh, they only sort of hinted at it. But um, disappointing, I think, both for us and perhaps for them and for everybody watching, that uh, the first time they put all these upgrades on will be first practice Friday morning in Melbourne. Yeah, we expect teams to be bringing different upgrades from the final two days of testing to Melbourne. It's just that Ferrari don't seem to be having much that they're bringing in the interim uh, on that one. A 132.5 for Fernando Alonso, by the way, on the uh, the first time lap of this run, which does intimate that he is heavy with fuel and, and starting a race simulation as, as the Williams uh, gets rolled back. So many tweets coming in that I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with you all this afternoon, but Shannon Hollis a woman after her own heart. So, uh, 3,000 word essay, she says, I've got to do. But my love for Red Bull and McLaren is stronger than law. <laughs> so there, that, that's strong. And Becky Foote is sitting in the living room eating popcorn, which I like. Uh, popcorn and sitting in my living room, both of those. In, uh, and Blair Forbes wants to know, why don't they do testing in Abu Dhabi instead of Barcelona, which a lot of fans, Martin, are asking at the moment. Why are we here? And so are some of the people in the teams. Uh, of course, they started to go to Bahrain. Uh, they had a, a couple of sandy days there, but it's six or seven hours flight and it, it makes an awful lot more sense, frankly, but from a cost point of view. I, they decided they didn't want to do that anymore, but Abu Dhabi would work as well, as you say, and, uh, and they would be getting more representative running. I think they can extrapolate what would happen to the car temperatures. It's just what's happening with the tyres as they're, as they're out of their range. But that, that Ferrari is definitely fat on fuel. He's struggling to get it slow down into the apexes so he's going to be out on track for a while and we'll be here until the end of testing to cover it